we have about 16 people with us right now or 15 or so, but I want to introduce everybody to a very good friend of mine. His name is Daniel Gonzalez and he's taking up two screens right now, Daniel's iPad and Daniel's artwork. Uh, and Daniel, thank you very much for agreeing to come back and uh, join us again. This is the second time you've been involved with the theme Thursday. Uh, the first was when you showed us our the delightful Calaveras and I uh, I hope you're gonna continue, you know, if you wanna hang on to those pastels for a while and play around with your skeletons and your, your loving heart, uh, you know, feel free to do that. So you can have some more fun time. Um, but Daniel, you've got a theme for us today with Western inspiration. Yep. And yep. why don't you tell us a little bit about how this came about and, and the new materials that you're working with. Okay. I. Thank you, first of all, for lending me the pastels and offering to extend the, the rental <laughs> or the free, the free lend. Um, I, I should show you guys. It's incredible. Here, I'll just tilt my iPad over. Look at this. Look at this setup. She got wow. all the pastels. Yeah, it's an incredible case that folds out. And honestly, it's been, it's been so much fun just to pick and choose the right values that I need. Because I had like a 12 pack of pastels. <laughs> so so instead, of, instead of the Zorn palette, that would have been the Daniel palette with, you know, introductory to pastel. <laughs> yeah, th this is great. And um, the Western art that I've done, um, a lot of it kind of stems from my, my experience growing up in the Southwest. I, I spent some time on the Navajo reservation as a boy and I worked on a ranch growing up and along the US-Mexico border. And whenever I see livestock now, it's no longer a chore or something that, um, you know, I'm just so familiar with that it, I don't really see it now because of the distance, you know, I've been away from the ranch for a while. Now, whenever I see a, you know, a beautiful cow or horse or even a churro sheep, I, I, I become very nostalgic and I, I can't help but uh, feel emotionally connected to it. And it, it's been really fun to get back into Western imagery, exploring my Native American, Apache, Mexican heritage, and, and the beauty of the Southwest that I grew up. Um, I've been working on a series of uh, paintings of the West and preparing for some big Western shows coming up, including probably the biggest one is the CM Russell art auction in Montana. So I'm, um, I'm on the finish line, headed towards the finish line with a few paintings, but here's one I can share. So this is one, I can set it up here. Kind of the same theme. It's on uh, Daniel's artwork screen, if you guys wanna check it out. Mm -hmm. So this one is a paint application that's really thick. So I'm mixing my color and applying it and being very methodical. <laughs> There's not a lot of blending going on, not a lot of petting the canvas. It's just mix the color, apply it, and then go back. And I'm painting with a lot of purpose here. And this is on my friend, uh, Sarah's Ranch. They have uh, Brangus cattle. And I used to help um, brand, tag, immunize these cattle when I was in high school with her, you know? And uh, anyway, it was nice to visit the ranch again. and get these references and share some of the references with you and and tackle it in pastel yeah and uh this one it's uh, also from her ranch and i just i was wanting to paint it and i when i was asked about doing themed pastel thursdays with you all i was like well this one's next on the uh, on the next on my list so i might as well share this with you all and you know, I just, I love it when everybody's drawing the figure in class and everybody's own interpretation of the figure is slightly different. It just, um, it's something special about the arts, you know, that we all can create something very unique, even though we're referencing the same thing. So um, I really enjoyed it, painting this. And I usually work in series. Now I'm doing Western. Next I'll do figure and then I'll probably get back to Calaveras by the time the fall rolls around. So yeah, any, any questions? So who, who all here is going to go ahead and sketch, draw or paint or do something? 
come on, don't be shy. <laughs> no pressure. Oh, well. Um, <laughs> Great, Joe. <don't. laughs> no pressure. Um, I'm working on something, but it's a graphite piece. But <laughs> um, yeah, I'll just be working on it while I'm kind of paying attention to what everybody else is talking to, talking about. Hi, Christine. Hey. Didn't see you piping. Hi. Hey, Christine. I saw Hi the there. white earlier. That looked nice. That was fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, by Did the way, my the husband pulse? loved the print. Oh, cool. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. Oh, he loves it. Yeah. <laughs> so That's thank great. you. Very cool. Gosh, I feel like I have to move this closer so that boom, it's not in my face. Um, Cool. Well, I can go over some of my setup here. Um, so if you want to look at this, this camera, the one that's Daniel's artwork, and I can actually take my phone and show you that that's my canvas. It's basically the pastel paper that I taped to a board, just a regular um, 12 by 16 uh, aluminum board that I glued some linen on. It's like a painting panel. Here I have my sandpaper on a clipboard where I can sand it down to get a good sharp shape or if I wanted to dip a brush, like a watercolor brush. Here are my watercolor brushes and I have a little bit of alcohol in here where I can dip, pick up and apply. And then- I'm sorry, how do we, how do we get the, um, I, I'm seeing the, the phone image in the little, in the, in the little thumbnail on the side. Oh, there we go. I just spotlighted that for everyone. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Thank you. Now I'm getting Thank you. Too. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah. And if you guys have any questions along the way, just interrupt me, or else I'll just keep rambling on. <laughs> so, so sorry. What, but Daniel, um, what kind of paper are you using? Uh, oh, it's got a sand, sand, uh, sanded oh. seal to it. It's got a like a, a third inch border all the way around that's white i think i think that's art spectrum i just you know i i probably gave daniel about six different types of paper mm -hmm. um i just didn't give him the one the cork one you know where in case he decided to do something wet um mm -hmm. but daniel's really you know just i don't know you did pastels before uh but not a whole lot right daniel i mean you really yeah like, i did um, pastels about 12 years ago maybe just when I was teaching we had these hard crispy like they you drop them and they break and you could hear that little loud um <laughs> snap in the classroom and um but I use charcoal all the time and and I think if you can draw and you understand value then you you can do you know pastel it's I, I mean look at the mess look at my pants like look at that <laughs> and then um you know I got all these colors to my right over here and yeah, I'm making a mess with pastels. I think that's just because I'm not as well versed with the medium, but I think. No, it's, it's, art... not, it's not because of that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. Thank <laughs> the, I, the mess is, um, is inherent. Yeah, I, I think, you know, it, it's just been a little frustrating as I draw you know, I'm having to use the very edge of the cylinder from a fresh, you know, break or something to get a line. And with charcoal, I mean, I can sand charcoal to a very, very fine point if I want. And, and that I think has been frustrating for me. Is, you can do uh, that with pastels too. I, I think, thank you. I'm hesitant though, because I'm like, look at all this pastel, you know, compared to a piece of charcoal, this is far more valuable. <laughs> so so uh, Daniel, the, um, the pastel box that you elected not to take with you had a lot more of like the new pastels in them, which are harder and are very uh, conducive for either sanding down into a point or they give you a really good clean edge at any break. And we're really good about breaking pastels so we can get those edges. <laughs> Ah, I see. See, see, these are the trade secrets that I get in the meetings. Nice. I'm glad I'm, you know, and then I didn't I didn't want to overwhelm you, um, but I was going to go ahead and give you a whole set of pastel pencils. Yeah. Well, let's see what he does. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Pastel pencils. That would be I've used those before. Those are great. 
And, um, you know, with, with the watercolor brush like this, I can, you know, just, let's see, like I was doing this earlier, it kind of like gouache is what it reminded me of. I would take a little bit of um, pastel and grind it down like this, oops, and then hit it to spill it everywhere. <laughs> and then pick up some alcohol mm -hmm. and it's really saturated when it's wet right and then i'll apply it to the canvas just to show some of the weeds that are in the shade and they look so dark but it's kind of a a little present when it dries up from the alcohol and then you're left with uh, the color there so yeah. it's kind of like gouache in that sense that it dries a little lighter and and i've enjoyed that you know, playing around with that. Um, and really, I think that's the most important um, thing to remember is play. When I'm, when I'm working on something like this, uh, this is a smaller piece, um, I think it's nine by 12. I'm trying to play, I'm having fun. You know, if, and you know, this is my setup, I, I can back out a little bit, but you know, I have, my iPad there, I have my easel there, and then behind it's the TV. And I can watch uh, episodes, <laughs> or listen to them while I'm drawing and stuff. And so all day I've just been playing around, really enjoying my time. And I, I don't always get that chance, you know, but when I, when I get a chance to really just play, I find it's a lot of the times my best work and I get really creative and the nature of play is so powerful. As an artist, I think it's important to make time to play. Um, I agree. That's good to hear you say that because sometimes when you have a deadline coming up, it's like you get tight and you're all worried about meeting your deadlines. And when you don't have that, then you can just have fun and turn on music. And Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and, and it's like, the medium sometimes helps, right? Like if it's a piece of cardboard or a postcard, I love, one of the things I like to do is send art in the mail. I'll, de I'll decorate a postcard or make a little sketch that I'll do in the morning with my coffee or something. And then I'll send that out. I'll, I'll literally put it in the mail for somebody to give a home. Mm -hmm. But it's something that I can play around with and kind of warm up, you know, to the start of my day. I don't spend hardly, I'm, I'm barely an hour, maybe an hour, you know, but it's that, that start of playing in the day that kind of energizes me. Um, and as I play around here, I'm not really looking at the reference anymore. What I'm doing is looking at the relationship of warm and cool and value, you know, um, the values from light to dark. Some things that are bobbing around my mind right now um, are compositional. You know, I have up here in the corner, you can see the little cow in the distance that was in the reference photo. And I still haven't decided if I want to include that or fill it in. So I've left it alone. <laughs> and um, I've made this far more colorful than the reference photo. And one of the things I always find I'm doing especially now, and you'll see it with my painting, even if you look at some of the paintings, is of uh, put yellow in the front because it just, it helps the foreground kind of jump out in front, even when it's so sun bleached and it all seems yellow. If, if I add a little pop of yellow in the front, it really uh, comes a little closer to the viewer, I think. And I mm -hmm. save some of that to, to kind of um, play around with. And just my paint, my pastel application is kind of wonky, but I, I find it works. <laughs> yeah, just, just down to the nitty gritty of the mark making and playing around. Yeah, it's like the icing on the cake, you know, the little bits. I think Christine said, is that what a quote that I took from Christine? I think she said like icing, icing on the cake last thing Thursday. And I was like, oh, that's a great way to put it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, I mean, the, the details of like the eye, I can work later, but I kind of like the passage that's happening where 
certain values are are creating an invitation to the viewer to kind of create the own the viewer will kind of imagine it, imagine their own eye there and stuff mm -hmm. but um that i, I i've always played with uh, passage in a composition so that's Um, you and, used the word passage. Um, is that P-A-S-S-A-G-E? Yeah. And, and I hadn't heard that used before in painting. Yeah, it's uh, an Italian, I think, an Italian right. word. Um, but yeah, in in the atelier, you'll use it a lot for like figure drawings. You'll see a lot of the old masters using passage. And I think it's a fun word to say, so I'll say it. <laughs> <laughs> And one of the things, like I'm, you know, when I blocked this in, it was very chunky and you can kind of see evidence of, um, I don't know, me moving quickly and just blurring all the details of what would be the anatomy. And so one thing I'm kind of a stickler about is the anatomy of animals and figures. Um, a lot of the times I'll see in Western art, you know, a beautiful horse and sometimes, you know, the landscape calls for it, but their hooves are just buried in grass. You never see them like standing or, you know, the anatomy of the hoof. And I'm like, come on, like, uh, you don't have to color, cover all the feet in the grass. But I, I like to show a little bit of the anatomy of the hoofs um, and ground my figure sometimes with uh, some shadow. Mm -hmm. Not all the times, but but I love paint. I've found I love painting hooves. I mean, just look look at in this painting here. I'm not done, but look at all the hooves. Oh my <laughs> god, that that was fun. That was a blast. Daniel, I have to say I am guilty of that when I do horses. I'll put grass up <laughs> over them because then it's just quicker and easier than having to like because the hoof, the fetlock, and the hoof. It's very complex and it has to be exactly right. So sometimes yeah. I'm like, ah, let's cover this one with grass. Throw in the grass anyway. <laughs> It I is. Expect the hoof from now on. Now that you've said that, thank you. Do it. And um, hmm. there's this uh, wonderful artist who has some videos online who's just the biggest lover of horses. And um, gosh, what is her name? She did work for actually on Star Wars, and she's a big Disney artist and stuff. Um, creating creatures, a lot of uh, creature design stuff. I'll remember her name in a second. And uh, anyway. Oh my goodness, I, I have a book of hers. And if I don't remember her name, I will just grab the book. Um, but yeah, after um, trying to teach uh, animal anatomy, I, I, Tara Whitletch, that's her name. I found some of her books and looked her up and emailed her. And she was actually really sharing, really generous with uh, information. And we studied- Can you say her last name? Whitlatch, W-I-T-L-A-T-C-H or something like that. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm, I was teaching middle school at the time in Denver, and I wanted to take the kids to the zoo. And so we studied um, an, animal anatomy, and they all learned that, you know, um, I don't know, this is actually the ankle of the cattle, you know, <laughs> it's not the backwards knee, and that you know, that they have um, digits just like us and basically like comparative anatomy. Um, a bunch of creatures do, well, a bunch of mammals. And so we went to the zoo and drew a bunch of animals. That was a blast. I didn't get to draw an animal though. I had to do a design for a client while I was on the field trip. They called me and they wanted me to do a a design <laughs> it's, it was hilarious i work with the some bands and one of them is roger klein and the peacemakers and he'll call me and want to design like you know that day and so i'm like oh i'm on a field trip with the kids when do you need the design he's like I actually need it in a couple hours <laughs> i'm like oh my god and uh <laughs> so on my phone i did a design um and i sent it to him and now it's like the restaurant menu design that the, he, he has a, like a restaurant in Mexico that is called Bandito's and it's a fun little skull in a big sombrero <laughs> yeah 
anyway, I, I'll never forget that because I was pretending to draw animals in front of the kids and really just drawing a logo. <laughs> yeah. I forgot how I got there. Oh, yeah, Terrell Whitlatch, yeah. Um, let's see. I just put Some... her name in the chat. I Googled her, and her name is spelled in the chat if you want to look it up. Okay, oh, cool. cool. Thanks. Thanks. Christine, thank you, Christine Whitney, for sending us the definition of massage. It actually oh, looks like a passage, right? But it's pronounced massage. Yeah, yeah that's thank cool. You. And so the, you know, the, one of the things you, in, that I was taught very earlier is that if it's a warm day outside, the shadows are cool. And, and so that, that idea, that, that kind of rule has been with me for a long time, but I've found that I can sneak uh, some cool in the highlights and I can sneak some warms in the shadows. Mm -hmm. um, just have to be dis, you know, discerning about it. So here's a very light green and it works, you know. I don't want it to look too much, too colorful, you know, like too circus, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> you know, too much color, but I do want it to be kind of a where's Waldo when people look up, you know, when they get close, they can, oh, look at that color. Oh, I didn't know there was green in there. And oh, you know, that kind of fun stuff that happens um, when people get close to a painting, they can really, uh, be surprised by its composition, you know, by its makeup. There was no green in the bush, in the mesquite bush. It was dead. It's like, yeah. It's bare. <laughs> and my <laughs> wife, you know, she's watching me because we're both watching TV and she's on the couch behind me working on her laptop and I'm doing the, we're both working, but our workstations are completely different. And <laughs> she looks over my shoulder and goes, oh, you should put some green in that in the mesquite oh, okay and so I splattered some green and you can see um, some of the little splatter dots and I splattered some pinks and reds and stuff and I like to use where is it um, a little fan brush like this um, what I'll do is I'll let's see I could just do it right here I'll get some green I might as well get some dark green just rub a little bit there, dip it in alcohol, get some green. And then I think I was able to get away with this in the house earlier <laughs> without having to go to the garage. Yeah. yeah. And, and I could just splatter it and keep the areas up here, you know. And if it gets on the cow, that's fine. This is like the first layer. I'm not. I, I tend to think in layers, like, you know, I'm just having fun anyway. And so usually like you can see they kind of splash diagonally. I can do it again. And like, I wanted you guys to see, but um, I can hold it. Actually, I'll do something that'll push it back a little further. I'll do a blue. Yeah. So here's, wow, that's really intense. Um, <laughs> Like, it's funny because in the shadow, it looks dark and then I bring it to the light. And that looks like, you know, way too green. And so here, I'll do something that, yeah. So I'm basically just creating that little puddle and then I'll take this down and splatter. There it goes. And, and just a little controlled splatter right there. You can see it's more shadow in that bush and it's that play between pushing back and pulling forward that, that I really enjoy what's up oh and so you can um, you know uh, amend these little pieces and kind of use a brush to paint go and so that is like a very dark teal but it's a cool color and then on top of that I can then sprinkle some more or once it dries I'll even like I want to say dry brush but I will scrape like uh, horizontally a piece of uh, 
I'll show you when it when it dries. And um, ooh, I kind of like how the green looks in here. I mean, look at how those little green splatters came out. They're kind of fun with the red. I'm not going to keep all of them though. To get rid of them, I can use a Q-tip like this and just wipe off a few of those that I don't want. It kind of looks nice because it looks like a brindle sort of uh, cow then. Yeah, yeah. It was a really pretty one. Um, yeah, and um, I don't know, I'm still undecided on this guy. I felt compositionally like it's too tongue in the cheek if it's the cow horn is just pointing right at it, <laughs> you know? I'm like, oh man, that's, that's a little too much. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna keep it or not, but there's areas like this straight line, you know, and um, oh. in anatomy, I, there are very like, almost impossible there's no straight lines you know it's all bones and sinew and muscle and fur and so like this straight line bothers me and I need to give it more um more life you know and it's it's not a perfect straight line there's there's fur there's dirt you know I really want the ground to feel dry you know, inviting and colorful, but dry. It's the desert, you know. <laughs> um, the values here are messing me up. I like to, as a rule, for to myself. I don't, I don't, I don't think this is written in anywhere. I like to have at least four four dominant values on my on my landscapes. Mm -hmm. and that helps push things back or bring them forward. And when I squint my eyes at this. I see mainly three and I, I need to make a decision to, to bring this forward or to push and, and push that back more. And so I'll use value shifts to do that. <clears throat> yeah, so like up here, you know, this, the sky and everything could be um, boosted a value and it can be really light it can be the lightest thing out there I can paint sky on top of my bush that's fine one of the things that I'm learning how to get better about is the fact that I pick up pastel as I go <laughs> it's really a fun medium i'm like my goodness thank you kath for, for forcing me to you're welcome you know. i should have thrown in a uh, roll of paper towels for you uh or wipe <laughs> baby wipes that's what i use oh baby, baby wipes. wipes you're gonna have a lot of those daniel yeah i use those too that's oh yeah we got boxes of those around the house right now we're all ready for the critter to move in oh my goodness uh, what's the date what's the actual due date the critter the, uh, 24th oh yeah so it's right around, right around the corner that could be any time now or later <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah we're pretty thrilled about it um so excited. oh my gosh yeah we've been going on walks um just talking about it trying to figure out a uh, name if it's a boy we got a name if it's a girl though so uh <laughs> just <laughs> just gotta keep digging i guess i'm gonna sprinkle some more like all these little i guess they're magenta um dots are supposed to be kind of the texture of the ground and so i want to kind of create some splatters um to indicate a little bit more texture and make the difference between this very bright value in the back and kind of darken up this value a little bit so that there are different value planes. And so the background is um, very distinctly different than the foreground because this is too much of the same value as that. Right. So one of the ways um, I guess I can go about it is use my handy dandy toothbrush 
and just sprinkle uh, value until I kind of, it's like an airbrush, you know, make it until it's there. But I want to be a little bit more bolder than that and use my fancy fan brush to pick up some darker values and splatter them down. And I'm going to use some of the cooler value color. I don't want to use the same value or the same color as this guy because that will flatten the image. You know, try, not, very few things repeat in nature. And so the values here on this mesquite bush are, are belonging to that part of the painting. And so I need different ones down here. You know, it'd be different if I was working with a very limited palette. Well, not even, because then I'll, you know, I'm not gonna use the same pool of color for everything. Yeah, I think if you're working from a photograph, it's great to get your, your inspiration and kind of move from, away from that, you know, once you don't need it anymore. You know, be the artist, you make your own value judgments and stuff. Um, you know, there is no wrong or right at that point. So I'm gonna lay this down and then splatter. Actually, I think I can show you. Ooh, there we go. I think. Sorry for making it very dizzy. Pick up some more. There we go. I mean, it's just fun and messy. And I might even pull some of those across. Well, your kid's gonna love you, Daniel. <laughs> you, know, you know, make it messy. <laughs> I mean, you gotta have fun. All right. And so, I mean, let me back up and put the camera up there. So you can see already, I think, uh, not only a textural difference from the background to foreground, but you're all, you know, this is really dark right now, but once it dries, uh, it's gonna get lighter and you're gonna see um, not just the texture that's differentiating, but the value. And so these can be rocks or just divots in the dirt. And on the other side of those divots, remembering what direction is your light source, you can, you can add highlights and that, that will enhance um, your texture, your foreground. And again, with the yellows, you know, change up your yellows. So you can see like this little guy right there, all of a sudden becomes a rock that's got um, a highlight on it, you know, same thing there. And I have so many yellows and orange <laughs> pieces of pastel to choose from. <laughs> Again, the kid in the candy store, you know, kind of uh, reference pink one orange. And you can see that like it, it's, it's not moving quickly right now. I'm kind of like taking my time just really composing here. And there's going to be some of the reflected light in these rocks. Because at least in my own memory and from my own drawings of uh, landscape from the southwest there's a lot of caliche clay down in this area in southeastern Arizona along the U.S. Mexico border and that caliche clay has you know it's, it's kind of white and when I paint it it's really fun to make it look really warm. I guess that's the other thing I'm, I should say like if you're using photographs like that's great go ahead use your photographs but uh, nothing compares to painting from life. You've probably heard that a thousand times. It's true. Like if you can get out there. Daniel's been taking uh, several opportunities to get out with Bernard, uh, plein air painting out in uh, Palos Verdes. Enjoying that. Well, you can, Daniel. Yeah, well, <laughs> I can Fridays. Um, it's really great. He, um, he has a good group and he'll scat out different places every Friday to go and 
we just go out there and paint and it's really good i'm glad he he's doing that it gets me out of the house and honestly it helps me do something that i normally isn't wouldn't have on my list usually i'm i have i've been saying yes to all these crazy commissions you mm -hmm. won't believe them <laughs> i've designed some coffee bags i've been doing like family portraits i've done like uh uh underwear design recently that <laughs> you bet i am not gonna sign um it's just <laughs> all these things that I'm just like oh, okay yes i can do that yeah 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 and then here comes bernard with a breath breath of fresh air i'm like ah, mm -hmm. i used toothpaste <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm like thank you so much man um <laughs> no it's a pleasure to have you aboard dan and mm -hmm. um you know, we, we all benefit from seeing each other's work and, uh, you know, other students have less experience than you do, and they really like to see what you're doing. And um, everyone, uh, last week, it was very misty, and everyone did a brilliant job, those who weathered the, uh, the weather, you might say, and uh, mm -hmm. we dealt with a very grey-ish Royal Palms Beach, but we got some tremendous results. And I'm going to send those out tonight to all those who are going to be participating from last week and tomorrow. So if you're part of the group, you'll you'll see what what others were doing. Right on. Yeah, that, that was a lot of fun. Um, I I hope to continue doing that. Every, you know, even when the baby's here, just get out oh. a few hours to go and paint. Maybe um, the, maybe the baby could model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> amidst the rocks or something <laughs> yeah um no, no, no. I, I love painting the figure outdoors <laughs> yeah right daniel i have a question and maybe you can explain how do you handle the terminator line you've got such a beautiful oh the, edition, the passage yes can you um talk a little bit about that as you're i'm always looking for the terminator line because it really helps me um know what what decisions I need to make you know and then once I identify it I go okay that's my terminator line so everything above that on the cow's body is going to be lighter than anything below and already I see like the udder and the chest right here are the values pretty close to the shoulders near and and I I want to darken that and I want to darken that because even though they're getting reflected light, they are not going to be as bright as that. So that's the first thing with the Terminator line. Even on the head, there's a subtle Terminator line. I I like to play around with it though. I I Per Don is one of my favorite draftsmen, and he he did um, amazing figure drawings where he would always exaggerate this beautiful. Um, uh, a core shadow terminator line going down the figure and i i just love how he played with that and and i tried to do that in a lot of my figure drawings and what i found is that in life you don't always have a perfect terminator line there's reflected light there's light coming off you know everywhere else and so unless you're in a very controlled area sometimes or have one direct light source you're you're not always going to have this beautiful terminator line so when you do take advantage of it and utilize it and if you don't you know you can exaggerate it and you can also just you know play around with it and and make decisions of what works but right here it's not working for me in the sense that i'm not i'm not done with it because it kind of looks like um at least in my mind, let me see if I can explain this, as like a crease. It looks like a crease, like somebody's like pinched a piece of paper and you have one side really bright and one side really dark. I need to do a better job of turning the form. Do you know what I mean? Like making it not so an abrupt mm -hmm. light dark, but play a little bit more on, on the values. And so let me see if I can find the right or one that will work so this is not as dark as that but not as light and so i will 
start to turn my form, being aware of the ribs that protrude. And I like kind of like the freckled stuff and the fur, the beautiful, you know, sometimes better beautiful than perfect, but I do want to create a better turning of form there. It's easier on skin, you know, for me to render than fur. I'm still figuring out pastel. And I guess that's my artist disclaimer. <laughs> Take it easy on me, guys. <laughs> well, a painting medium because I love how you're using your different tools and the brush and the splattering and you can really play with it and have so many different ways to make it work. And so you can see just, you know, a little bit of love here will help turn that form a little bit easier rather than just, um, you know, light and then dark. You know, it works sometimes, but some, you know, if I really want to, I don't know, create that illusion of form and really make this, this cow look a little full, then I'm going to have to really uh, render the form and that is usually what takes time and you know there's no shortcut oops way too late there's no shortcut rendering take you know just takes time and and I think that's 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 some of the cool stuff you can see in artwork you can see hours where people put hours of work into something you're like oh wow you know and you, you see the time the investment of time Unless you're Mike Budkis, who uh -huh. does everything super quickly. <laughs> um, yeah. And sometimes, does, you know, I, I like a bit of play back and forth. I like, I like something that looks really rendered next to something that's, you know, in the same composition that's, you know, abstract and splattered. <laughs> you know what I mean? All right, this iliac crest right here is like probably the sharpest thing on this part on the body of the cow. And so that part can be a little bit, you know, sharper of a turn. I don't need to render the turn there. Um, it's just the hip of the cow. Yeah, but it's looking really fun. I love all the play and color. And oh, I forgot to clean up the a leg there, <laughs> like I said I would. Um, all right. Daniel, I'm gonna have to leave, but I wanted to thank you. I really enjoyed watching you work and picked up all kinds of good things I wanna play with. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for joining. Thanks for having me. So you know, much. I, I was just talking to Jackie, and I, my wife and I, was, we were watching this show on Netflix called Afterlife, and it's uh, it's a heartfelt comedy. And anyway, there's a moment where he says to a coworker, "Hey, you want to grab some coffee?" And oh, that just oh man, I miss having coffee with friends. <laughs> like just going out and having a cup of coffee, you know, just for no good reason at all. Just like, hey, let's go chat. <laughs> so this is kind of like that, you know. This is like my coffee with friends. So. Thank you. I agree. That's how I feel too. All right, Glenn, we'll see you on February 10th. Okay, thanks so much. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you, Glenn, for coming on. Thank you. All thanks. right, step up on the dusty easel. Yeah, so this is like my coffee, coffee with friends time. I know, I'm glad we're able to join us. Good to see you, man. Cool. Good to see everybody. In Sorry, I'm late. How you doing, Daniel? Doing good, man. How you been? Good. Staying busy. Staying real busy. So, my apologies. I wanted to get here by six thirty, but I had too many too many errands for when I had to get them done today. No worries. I understand. Like, life gets busy, man. Yeah. I'm having fun with pastels, believe it or not. <laughs> making a disaster of my living room 
and my pants. I just keep wiping my hands on my pants. So, so you've been officially baptized now into the Cast All Society, Daniel. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> I think I'm going to try and do more, um, I don't know, kind of like this hybrid of painting and, and regular application. I, I do like the paint splatters and I want to even get some drips going, little ones of uh, put turning this upside down like this. I mean, I'm playing, I guess I could do it here. Um, I, 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 I was telling everybody that I like to play around when I'm um, painting and just having fun with some new uh, mediums. And so let's see, well that, yep, that's way too much. So I have the edge of the canvas here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Oh yeah. I'm able to like drip the alcohol down and go, oh, okay, that's kind of like the run. And so I'll load it up and you know what'll help that? A kind of compressed air. If I had a can, wait, no, then <laughs> I'll like blow everything. Never mind. But, you know, that's just like my thought process. Like, oh, how can I, how can I use, I, I guess what I'm saying is I like for paint to be paint. I like to see the medium. I like for the pastel chunks to kind of sit on top. I'm really enjoying the kind of texture that they pile on top of each other and the kind of chalkiness and dusty desert floor. But I'm also curious about, you know, what else pastel can do. And so it's been a while since I played around. So I'm gonna try and treat it like thinner with oil paint here and see if it'll, yeah, look at that. It does, it does kind of, um, drip and create these little veins and so that's fun i'll probably employ that down here on the ground a little bit oh yeah i mean you guys can't see it so closely but it's taking the top layer right off and kind of digging little little rivers rivlets i would say yeah so there's a bunch of fun stuff that i'll probably play around with this and then of course i'll post a finished picture because this is alcohol there we go daniel that brush that you were using is that something that you would normally use in your oil painting for like your grasses or it this like, no no oh, this, oh, no this, it looked like it had been cut into that it was like a uh, yeah this, where's the this, camera right that's just a well-used yeah. brush it actually is thinned out when i bought it but i i mean it's it has battle damage i've used this for a <laughs> while with gouache and uh, watercolors and let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll do this with oil paint sometimes, but you can see like the little riblets coming down mm -hmm. where the alcohol is actually cutting into the, the application of pigment. And once it dries, you might be able to see it better. But really, I'm just having some fun here playing around. Um, yeah, I don't think it's going to drip anymore. And that could be, you know, a little bush, little grass. Some of the time, sometimes you can see it a lot in my Calavera work, like um, up there, you can see that I have practice in the skeleton. What I like to do is invite the viewer by creating um, kind of a border. So it's not just in front of the viewer's face. Sometimes I'll create um, a vignette of a cactus or something as like to, to help the viewer peer into the scene. And I do that a lot with um, my compositions. Um, you know, this one's just a portrait of a cow right here. Everybody can see. And then this value, like I said, it's a little light. So I'll push it down and you can see, like this is a terminator line of the, or the what is it, core shadow line on the cow. And so, this armpit shouldn't be as bright as anything there. It should be a little darker. And I can darken the, the udder also, but I want to make it a little pinker. This might be too hot pink. I don't know. It's actually just too hard. Me. This is this is like a lot of movement going to like the sandpaper and everything really enjoying it 
There we go. And that'll darken this a little bit more. I think that kind of works. Poking around my composition here. Um, yeah, let's see. This is actually reminding me of um, a funny time when I thought I, well, as a teenager, you know everything. And one time um, some cattle got loose on our property. And rather than going and corralling them the way I was supposed to, I, there was one cow and it was a younger cow. And so I thought I could just rope it and walk it back. You know, I had gotten most of the herd back, but this young one was stubborn. And I thought, oh my gosh, I'll, you know, so I roped it and I'm literally walking it back to the house. And I was getting so impatient and the cow was just kind of trotting with me. And I, as I, I was getting closer and closer to my house, it was stopping more and more. So I was about a mile away from my house and I'm going, come on. And I'm trying to pull a cow with a rope, you know, mm -hmm. that's always a losing battle. And the cow <laughs> and it started to kind of run. And then it was running and there's a bunch of mesquite trees all over Cochise County. And and I, I was young and dumb and I'm like, oh, I could run with this calf or with this cow. I, I was running with it and I was like hurtling over brush and, you know, running through the desert. And all it took was one gopher hole and boom. And uh, man, this cow was dragging me through the desert. It was, I mean, I imagine it would have been a pretty funny scene if somebody else was there. <laughs> but thankfully it stopped and I licked my wounds and learned a very important lesson that day that you just can't rush a thousand pound animal <laughs> what they want all right daniel wait till you come to our cattle ranch you're gonna have a whole <laughs> herd of thousand pound animals coming out <laughs> oh i that'd be awesome you know I'm, i i think i learned quite a few lessons that i have uh, just a lot of love and respect for these beautiful oh. creatures we have so this is like Go ahead. Light hitting that back hoof and so I'm pulling out the light there and I don't know on the reference photo if that's if that's really prominent or not yeah it's on there okay <laughs> um, something in the chat Daniel from Christine that says please share with Daniel that Gamsol or rectified turpentine with oils works well in particular in the beginning layers and transparently then with the uh -huh. pastel and subsequent layers you add the lighter pastels yeah I use Gamsol a lot it's like mineral spirits, interchangeable. I don't know. I don't know, you know that, that was a thought of mine because what I'll do in my underpaintings for oil paint, I'll use charcoal. I'll mm -hmm. use the, these makeup sponges mm -hmm. and um, I'll, I'll just sand a bunch of charcoal. And with painting medium, which is a drying medium and some varnish mixed in, it's very traditional. I'll pick it up and I'll use it directly on my oil primed linen. Mm. Pop, 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 pop. Mm. And I didn't, that didn't occur to me. I could have just done that. <laughs> it would have mm. been like oil painting with uh, like ground up pigment. It would have been like really thinned out. Some of my favorite pigment lately has been very textured. It's by Rublev and it's got, it's not buttery. It's got some, some texture in there. Like they didn't grind it all away. And I, oh, I love it. Mm. Love all those uh, paints. Oh, okay. So this dried. And let me just show you, show you what I was talking about. So you can see how the alcohol cut through the, the application of pastel to reveal like a little skinny line in there. If I want to down the line, I can actually use that to some effect, you know, in the painting. So it's fun to play around and experiment and I'm having a blast doing that. I don't know how Otto gets his rendered finishes. Like, is he still here? Can, the, can you tell us a secret? Do you just like sharpen your pastels to a point? I, yes. Yeah. yeah, either the pastel, yeah, either the, the pastel um, or the pastel pencil, the broads, you know, if I, I, I tend to sharpen them really long um, because I can use the, the broad side of the, of the pastel. But um, typically, it's just it's just a, a, 
a lighter touch and and, and layering uh, each of the each of the uh, each pastel. So I, I mean, are, are you using Rembrandt right now, uh, or I'm using what, the what, oh, you're just using a variety right now? Okay, yeah. yeah. Path was so, really generous and gave me like the mother load of uh, <laughs> pastel. Um, <laughs> yeah, she she gave me all these chunky little. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, very yeah. soft, delicate little guys. Yeah, as, as so uh, yeah, you know what? I, I tend to um, reserve just the really soft pastels for highlights, but I tend to work from the the harder pastels up to the uh, uh, medium soft pastels. Generally, I suppose you know. So, it, it, yeah. So I did it opposite. Uh, no, you can work it any way you want, as long as <laughs> you know, as long as you're happy with it. Yeah. Yeah, I basically went soft pastel the whole thing and then just liquid mixed in there. You can, I'm really proud of this, uh, the face so far, yeah. the bladder. I'm like that like worked it, out dude. to get that texture. Exactly. I want to work more Very on the cool. nose. You know, I, I, I want to show you, Daniel, my sharp pastel. Can you see yeah, that? Let's see Pardon? Let's see it. Oh. I think I have the, I have to turn the thing around. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Hold on. If anybody's painting along, I want to. Oh, here it is. Just... Can you see it now? Oh, you yeah. have to pin uh, it. Yeah. yeah, I can. That's. I can't see it. It's right in front of her screen. It's a green pastel pencil okay, that you sharpened. I have to look. Oh, I see what you mean. Like she's in a different grid. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, okay, so yeah, maybe at this point, pastel pencil for like the super fine details. Or I wonder, I wonder how well colored pencil will work because that's kind of like a wax binder. Uh, it doesn't have any wax in it. Oh, I mean like a colored pencil or co colored pencil? No, well, co colored, colored pencil a, would. A colored pencil will be a subtractive medium. So just so you know, I mean, I, I, it, it, it's, they're much harder. And they do have uh, tend to have some kind of waxy binder in them, uh, especially um, well, what's the ones I use? It's the the, the prism color. Right, right. So it would be a, a subtractive uh, technique. Okay. All right. Cool. I'll get those I pencils out to you, Daniel, so you can play with those. <laughs> oh boy. No worries. <laughs> And so, I mean, once I, um, oh, I forgot to do the light green splatter on this tree. Um, you know, I, I splattered some darker, I guess I can just use a lighter green and just rub. These pastels are so soft, like, I don't know. I'm almost afraid to spray fixative on there afterwards. I wouldn't. <laughs> you, you wouldn't? Really? I would not, no. I, would not. I think that that that's a you know again. I mean, I don't either. Uh, but that's a very personal choice because, like, you know, Bill Creevy would would layer it upon you know create layers uh -huh. of of, of uh, different types of uh, uh, you know spray mediums, and and that's how I got much of his texture. So yeah, again, medium. It, it's a it's a personal choice to see if you want it to become part of your painting. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I think. I mean, my inclination is like with the charcoals I do, I spray them because I don't know, I, I put them in a flat file on top of one another mm -hmm. and they they would just smear, smear all over the place if I didn't spray them. But you can, uh, also, you can use glassine if you don't want to do that. If you feel like there's um, subtle, very subtle values that you don't want to affect mm -hmm. uh, with the, with the, with the uh, fixative, then maybe you just, put a piece of glass scene over it. Glass scene, there you go, yeah. That's what I do. <laughs> right, uh, yeah. Nice. Christine, we're gonna have to uh, try some of that wine you made. <laughs> yeah, I know. I didn't make it though. <laughs> I just did oh. the labels. <laughs> oh, okay, that's cool. Is it from your vineyard? I Well, actually my studio is at a vineyard. And um, but I don't own the studio or the vineyard, um, but they produce a lot of wine there and uh, I get to uh, get free bottles of it. And that's pretty nice. <laughs> oh, okay. <Yeah. laughs> I know. <laughs> so when I paint, I usually use 
on fine details like a mall stick, but I'm just putting my pinky down just to hold myself still. Um, yeah, so I think I'm coming to the point where, I don't know. I'm, I've used pastels in the past really quickly just to do like a two value study, like silhouettes, you know, of a guy on a horse or something just to see if it was a strong composition. And uh, they're fun. I would just send them out in the mail. And now I'm thinking like, wow, this is a, this looks like a paint, like this is a painting here, you know? Like, this okay. is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this is Not only does it look like a painting, it is one. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, oh man. I mean, this. a lot of oil painters are pastel artists and back and forth because it's the same technique. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And I, like, I keep going back, like this is a painting yeah. that I was, you know, this is a quick study, you know, very blocky. You can see like some of the same thought process, you know, um, going t into this. I, or, oh, Otto, earlier I was talking about, you know, what I was working on and it was like this painting here with like a very purposeful, just not a lot of blending or anything. And on here, I, I tried to start that way and then I found myself trying to layer and blend and just play around. It's been fun. I've really enjoyed this. So you'll find, uh, Daniel, that uh, the differences on some of those papers are maybe how many layers of pastel that they'll take. And, you know, that's why there's there's so many uh, different options to choose on, you know, to choose and see which ones you like better. And the UART itself has different grits. I think I gave you 400, mm -hmm. but there's a 320 if you wanted even a bit, you know, a thicker grit and they go to five, 600 and 800. So. Gotcha. You know, I, I, as I squint my eyes, I'm realizing this shadow needs to get darker. And it's that play, you know, going back and forth, making your own value judgments. Like I was looking at the photo and I'm going, wow, that photo is like really, a photo will lie to you. You know, it's got, it doesn't have your eyes. It, it'll, it'll choose one side. It'll be like, well, we're going to push all the darks making it way more contrasting than it is. And so I, I think I overcompensated making that shadow down here too light. Um, you know, if you do use photographs, you know, a lot of landscape artists do, it just, I think it's great. Use the photograph, use that reference, but, you know, keep in mind the, what painting from life tells you. And one of the things that I've told some of my students is like the outside area of that shadow is usually darker than the inside of that of that shadow. And if you do a lot of still lifes, you'll find that out too. Um, you can have fun with that. Um, you know, lightening up the area inside that shadow and giving that shadow some play. You know, it's not just a dark area. There's lights in there and there's darks. Yeah, I think just doing those subtle touches helped helped ground that cow a little bit. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. And you can put some grass that'll come up in front of that shadow, just letting you know like, oh, there's like texture and all sorts of stuff down there. Yeah. I mean I, I didn't know how much I would like this. Now I'm like having way too much fun. <laughs> Just <laughs> playing around with color and yeah. Oh man. We've turned you into a beast. Oh yes, my no. goodness. Now I'm gonna have to, like as if I didn't have enough, uh, you know, toys in my studio. I'm gonna run out of room. <laughs> uh, the baby's taking over everything. We got rid of a bunch of clothes. So we're just like, all right, I think this is enough room, right? Yeah. And then we got rid of some more. And I'm like, okay, all I need are like 10 shirts, really. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll go through that in one day. <laughs> You're going to be doing That's laundry. Funny. Those 10 shirts are going to be in the wash at the end of every day. Yeah, oh, those are, I meant like, I'll, I only need 10 shirts for oh, me. Oh, I thought you meant to me. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, I only need 10. Maybe can have the rest. Yeah. It's been interesting to kind of remember when I was growing up, um, my sister had some kids early and uh, 
it was my responsibility because I was in high school and I would raise these kids. So I would take them to daycare and practice. And then I'd have to do my chores at the ranch with these kids. Oh, and we had this black Angus bull named Conan. And this guy was a huge, I mean, just a boulder and its shoulders are so wide. Um, it was like a table and it was the most gentle thing. And I, you know, Ileana, my niece, um, gosh she was what three years old at the time she would just lay down on top of him Conan would be asleep on the ground and she would get up on his shoulders and just lay down on top of him without a care in the world and just just you know chill there as we would irrigate and do all sorts of stuff around the ranch and you know she'd be lying down on him or whatever as the cows grazing yeah I mean it's just such a big contrast i wish i had a photo mm-hmm. of that her mm-hmm. just on the back just a little pulga this little tick you know just on top of a huge huge uh, cow or bull that's you know? amazing yeah it's kind of a nice contrast you know i'll have to sketch it up now that you I should. It. what a fun narrative i like narratives and paintings you know this one is you know not so narrative it's very objective just boom here's a cow um, I've been working on a few where the, the narrative is a little bit stronger, you know, um, more, uh, more of like, uh, my own experience. There's one where we're all, there's four people and they're in a corral and they're branding and tagging cattle. And there's a little boy with a rope, you know, walking up <laughs> and, mm-hmm. um, you know, the narrative there is generational and, you know, work and duty, those kind of things. Um, but yeah, I think, um, Western art is very personal for me and I like to be authentic about it. Uh, Let's see. Yeah, I think this one's getting close to what I would call done for today. And then what I'll do is, um, I'll actually look at it in a mirror and I'll look at it the next day and see if something jumps out. You know, something like, oh, I didn't put any any reflected light right here. Look at that. That makes a huge difference. Silly me. And, um, you know, just these little things that you'll see later, you know, when you're, when you've declared it finished and <laughs> you put all your pastels away and <laughs> you're walking by the fridge and you're like, oh my gosh, how could I let that go? Um, that always that happens. Happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I don't know. I've been enjoying audiobooks lately and podcasts and, and, uh, I've ha- I think I've had my fill of those for a while. And so I've been really enjoying watching movies and, and shows while I draw and paint. Yeah. yeah. I like movies and shows like, uh, you know, that I've seen before that I don't have to keep looking up or, or maybe they're all recorded in the same place. Like, I don't know, like cheers, they're all in a bar, you know, <laughs> you don't have to look up, you know, where they are. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I've been able to go on runs lately. I, I messed up my knee um, a few months ago and I'm a runner. I used to run in college and high school. I love running and I, recently noticed that there were the clicks in my knee were less audible (laughs) maybe I could start running again and um had I done some PT like I probably should have I probably could have been out there a lot earlier but I'm thankful that I'm back out uh, running again now yeah and, and that helps me. I'm just a better person when I'm exercising. I'm more creative. I have more energy. And um, I just feel better overall. As an artist, I think that's um, a very important part of my artwork. Is that I find time to, to do stuff that takes me out of my studio. <laughs> We're going to have to get you a smushy white schminky for those really soft highlights on top (laughs) yeah this is like a not true white it's like a little bit of green in there i've been having a lot of fun 
because especially with the cattle, I mean, they're so, they're so warm that I'll use a little bit of a uh, green in my highlight, even though it's sunny, you know? Um, yeah, like I had that example, but there's so many examples just lying around here. I mean, this is like just littered with, this is my home. So let, I'm, I'm moving the camera. Can you guys see this? Yes. Okay. So like, I mean, those are the walls right there, but like on the floor down here, I have this, <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it before. Ah, not the best place for a painting, but I can kind of show you the, a little bit more example of what I'm talking about. Ah, so like, look at, look at how warm the, those cows are, but the highlight is actually a, a Viridian green, you know, wow. and it works, you know, the sky is actually a Viridian green. It's mm -hmm. not a white, but I'm using a very light green on top of those cows. Mm -hmm. For this whole painting, I just use green, um, burnt sienna and white, you know, that's it. And, and you could do so much with so little if, if you really are, are focusing on color value and temperature. Like this one has a lot more colors and it's, I think it's fun. It's, it looks alive. I like it, you know. You're really oh, getting and it's, a hot day too. It's a hot, you're getting that feel of a hot day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it, was, it was dreadful. Like we were out there before the sun rose, really trying to get ready. And I was given so much carrilla by these guys that I went to high school with, and, you know, this is what we used to do. And they were like, are you ready? <laughs> I'm there with my sketchbook and my camera. <laughs> and all day they're roping and tagging and branding. And I'm going, you, you guys are doing great. <laughs> yeah. And this is a book that, uh, you know, it's got a bunch of calaveras that I finished over the holidays. And so just it's got a bunch of the stuff that I've worked on over the years. And I want to do one of these of my Western art and my figurative art. Um, I feel like doing a little book like that was really fun to see the work I've done all in one place, you know, but it was a lot more work than I thought <laughs> putting the book together. I'm glad I got that done you know, for the critter is here. Mm -hmm. Critter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, an awful thing to say. Before the critter? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> critter, like, we just don't know if it's a boy or girl yet, so we've been calling it the critter so far. <laughs> it, very endearingly, you know. Um, yeah, the critter, the critter. Um, yeah. I feel like, uh, I don't know, it's, it'll transform my studio for sure. I've just been thinking like, okay, nothing like two feet, three feet below needs to be accessible. <laughs> gosh, <laughs> like, I'm, yes. you know, uh, at a certain point, you know, when the critter starts wandering around and stuff, like, okay, I gotta really think about. And getting into your pastels. <laughs> yeah like I wonder like what organizes it like I don't know those of you that have kids that are artists like I don't know did it push you in one way like really a lot like did you was there a medium you just decided to stop using well I, I was using oil paints and the big change came when uh, little Patrick reached over while I was in the studio and he stuck his hands and rubbed it through the phthalo <laughs> and then left the studio and he rubbed his hands all over the inside walls because he <laughs> liked to do it too. <laughs> that is a big change. That so was the end that, of that. That day, that, that day, no more oil paints. What was that? After that, no more oil paints? Uh, I turned, well, I, you know, I just turned to pastels because I was somehow easier to move things. It was easier to move things out of the way. And oh, I, yeah. I, it, it, it coincided with the fact that I wanted to brighten up the palette that I was using and I was creating too many muddy colors. Okay. Um, um, 
so it was a coincidental thing but i remember the uh the phthalo blue <laughs> <laughs> all over the place wow anybody else have a one baby i don't know push them in one direction in the studio well certainly um mm. a change in medium yeah Yeah, well, you I, really I, did break up that uh, straight line on that leg. Looks good. Thanks. Basso, basso, little by little, step. You know, just taking it easy. I, I've basso, basso. Get, I get frustrated at myself. You know, I'll I'll get I'll put it in my mind like, okay, I'll like don't get frustrated. I just need to move away from that area and then come back to it later. You know, um, not get too mad just at something that's giving me trouble at the moment. You know, there's that little guy. I haven't forgot about him. You know, <laughs> still don't know if I want to include the the cow way off in the distance. Oh. It bothers me that it's so tongue in cheek. You know, it's like the horn points right at that cow. When I took the photo, I was like lining it up for that purpose. You know. <laughs> but uh i don't think it needs to be there actually and yep i'm sticking with that value judgment yeah we're gonna race that guy <laughs> oh. there we go <laughs> since you pointed it out i liked it i know uh -oh. <laughs> yeah cool yeah what a what a fun time it is to like draw with artists and friends again. I I need to do more of this. I was really bummed when a piece Pia wait what uh Paulo Vera Art Center, Center, Center PPAC. PPAC. Yeah, they went. You know, I was looking forward to teaching figure drawing and figure painting Thursdays, and um, they canceled that um, in person. And then they said we'll just do it online, and then they canceled online. I go, oh man. <laughs> what yeah they I mean, not canceled postponed it till uh till oh. the spring and so that that so was a bummer but i told myself okay i guess every tuesday i could just you know I, part of it is wanting to get in that rhythm with other people because there's energy mm -hmm. that they bring and you know you you're there in the studio and the models there and you paint you create and i i love that camaraderie i love that energy but um, I don't know. I was looking forward to that rhythm, getting into that rhythm again. So now I just, I, you know, discipline. I'll, I'll told myself every Tuesday, I'm just going to do some figure drawing, some figure painting on my own. Yeah. Or you can do some underwear drawings. Oh my <laughs> God. You know, it was so bizarre. They wanted like, they're designing underwear. And they wanted me to do like an architectural design of them, like just the line art, you know, where the seams would be and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh my God, like, how did you find me? You know, a friend of a friend. And I'm like, ugh, I'm like, can you pay me up front? And yep. No, oh, yep. That, that's one I did without signing, you know, happy to. I don't know, get that check. <laughs> but the coffee one has been really fun. I've been does, designing all these trucks, these uh, C10 Chevys for um, this guy who wants, he's roasting his own coffee beans and he's, you know, it's all like the different, each truck has its own kind of uh, brew. And so that's been fun. You know, something different, trucks, you know, <laughs> digital. Yeah. Yeah, digital. Well, actually, just even doing commercial work can be fun because I enjoyed doing the wine labels. Yeah, yeah. I feel like um, it's always it's always like a double edged because you have, at least for me, I have uh, times where I don't have commissions, and I'm going, man, it'd be great to have a commission right now. <laughs> and then when I have commissions, I'm going, man, it'd be really great if I could just do my own work um yep I, I, I hear you <laughs> yeah yeah very thankful you know always um 
you know, I get to do this at the end of the day. I get to make art, so I'm pretty happy. Yes. Yeah. Um, I thought this was an odd composition too, I'll just say, because the, the horizon line was so high. And um, one of the things I've been doing is superimposing um, clouds, you know, from a different photograph on Procreate. I'll put it in my iPad and I'll, and then I'll render the clouds or something and um, create really an attractive composition. Um, I didn't do that with this one here. I just wanted to focus on the cow. But if I were to create, if I were to take this painting and I don't know, do something larger or do it again in, in oil paint or something, I would probably create. I don't know, more of a more of a traditional horizon line on the third. That way, I have some room for clouds. Yeah, just a little bit of my thought process there. Um, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm I'm pretty much at the stopping point here. You guys have any other questions? Boy, this is a silent group. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bunch of shy guys. You know what it is? We didn't uh, bring out the drinks ahead of time. Like right, like, and yeah. we were so riveted. We didn't want. I didn't want to get up and get one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Daniel, can you put a, a? Do you have a mat or a frame? You could just kind of like over a it. Nine just... by twelve. A nine yeah. by twelve. I think you I do, could. I do just... have it. 12. Love to, I love it when they do that and it just so awesome that shadow on the bottom I thought it was perfect until you redesigned it and added other colors it's marvelous just marvelous. Hey. thanks so I have a, a painting here that I did a little, I love that a little COVID. <laughs> there you go <laughs> again this is another uh, demonstration I did of a warm cool study <laughs> ultramarine, ultramarine blue and red sienna. Um, yeah, I could take this out of here really quickly. Oh, yeah, that gold is gonna look good with the oh, but highlights. You know, this is on a piece of paper. I don't know because it's not a very flat frame. It's got like a foot that's you know pretty thick, but. At least I can just <laughs> set it in there. Oh, well, that counts. I don't know. <laughs> this is awesome. <laughs> kind of like that. Kind of give it its own space a little bit. Yeah. Oh, I can move the light. I got this. I got this, guys. Watch. <laughs> oh. All right. There we go. Lower the light. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. It's good. Thanks. Yeah. Wow. That, that's a uh, mark. Brighton frame, I think, from uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I know Masterworks Frames in Utah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Yeah, they do, they do a really good job. Um, oh. Yeah. It's, Beautiful. Uh, I've got a I've got a few I've gotten a few from them. Yeah, they're they're good. Uh, Ma Michael, right? Michael from. Uh, yeah, Michael. Uh, yeah. Yeah, oh, really? Dude, yeah. I, I I had a show and I got like 12 frames from him and he gave me a, you know, a bulk discount that I was not expecting and he, he was just a really great guy to work with, yeah. Um I like I like working with them. They're pretty great. Good people. Yeah. Uh, oh, and, so fun. And then Vatican Vatican does a, a lot of good job with their frames, uh, but uh, Nigel actually, yeah, Nigel was the first one who started doing a lot of my handcrafted frames. He's really busy. I, I'm not. I, I think he's focusing on his artwork right now, so I don't know that you can put in an order for uh, Vatican right now. No, in fact, I, I reached out to him for like the uh, the shows coming up, like the the auction. The, the CM Russell art auction, but I can show you all some of his. So, oh, yeah. Daniel's artwork. So, like, this is a Vatican frame. Oh, nice. And it's beautiful. You know, oh, dear. Yeah. That's beautiful. And then, you know, there's another one. Oh, yeah. 
it, his work yes. is stunning. I think Nigel makes the best frames. Right. Yeah. 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 In fact, uh, Nigel did. Uh, if you guys remember the frame on uh, the Drifter mm -hmm. on the Canadian Goose that I did, he did that. One. Oh yeah. Oh okay. That yeah. was beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And so, I've seen that painting. I haven't seen. You have to send me a picture of that frame, man. Yeah, he did a really, really nice job on that. And uh, uh, yeah, that was that was uh, right before he opened his shop. So he was still working out of his home, and and then he he just uh, he opened his shop soon after that. But uh, yeah, I, I'll have to I have to look for a picture. I'll have to show you that he did a really nice job. Yeah, I would love to have. You know, I'm kicking myself because. You know, some of the paintings I sold, like little eight by tens and stuff, I would, you know, get a four orders from him or something and just put, put them in and send them off. And I'm going, man, like, <laughs> you know, his work, he's he's not making frames a whole lot right now. So I, no. I wish I'd held on to those a little bit more, you know. Uh, there's a, another gentleman, I, I got to. I, I gotta get his name, but he does some phenomenal Dutch Ripple frames. I mean, if you like Dutch Ripple, he does really good, really good work. So, yeah, the, I like Dutch Ripple on some figurative stuff. I think it, you know, it's, it just has a really classy look to it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I gotta put a, a shout out to my framer Jim over at the uh, Museum Quality Framing. So he's done most all of my framing. Yeah. Does he does he do uh, gilding? Yes. He does. Okay. okay. You know, the frame that I put, uh, well, I've got behind me, I've got this George Gallo painting that he that he framed for me. Oh. And uh, I do a lot of with the more contemporary things. Uh, we usually use like a beach frame with a, a mat. Mm -hmm. And they, I always get compliments on my frames. In fact, really? Sharon, yeah, Sharon Taylor said, you know, Margie, we, we love your work and we know it's always going to come in a beautiful frame. Uh, <laughs> well, wow. that, that can really, you know, make a difference, I think, in how your artwork looks. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I was I was recently uh, I have a, a photograph at the Westlake Village Art Guild. Uh -huh. And you know the guys there were really upset. We got three or four pieces in that weren't wired correctly and the the frame you could see that they weren't hinged together or nailed together properly. I mean, that, that took about three hours out of our hanging time to get those fixed. Not, not good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I used to work in a frame shop and, and we would see a lot of stuff come in and, and that they would say, oh, we don't want that frame anymore. And I, they, we would scrap it. And, <laughs> and I'm going you know, it's goodies for me and I'd take it home, you know, I was in college and stuff. And I, I would just try and do them up as best as I could. But even working at the frame shop, I couldn't afford frames um, for my own artwork. In fact, this one's from college and it's got that frame. I actually painted it on. Mm -hmm. you know, That's beautiful. Painted on the canvas. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And this is just a funny story about this frame. Oh. Um, this one. I painted oh, I like our dog that. Plata. That's very cool. Thanks. And she she passed away, and I had painted her, and I wanted to here. Let me set this down. I wanted to oh. put a a halo, mm -hmm. ah, a halo on top of her, and then Jackie with her ever. She's just a better better artist. She's just like doesn't need a halo, you know, you know, doesn't need one at all. But I'd left room and um, anyway, it ended up working well because they added the arch. Um, Nigel did this one for us. And That's really nice. Well, yeah. you know, it makes, it makes a statement, uh, Daniel, because it looks like the Stella, which is like the headstone. Oh, yeah. And uh, this is yeah. really memorializing her. Um, 
It's really yeah. pretty, very pretty. And, you know, like just, I was skeptical. Nigel convinced me. And uh, ever since then, this is, you know, this is the first frame I got from him. I've been oh. such a, a fan of his artwork. You know, the, the frames he makes, I, I feel like, like exactly um, the right frame can really um, enhance and Thank elevate. You. Yeah. 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 Oh, and yeah. when I frame this, like when you, when you guys frame your pastels, do you leave a gap? You know, like a yeah, a there. A spacer. A spacer. A spacer. So yeah. it doesn't get on the mat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then, uh, yeah, I'll I'll get it framed up and I'll show everybody. Beautiful. <laughs> so, Gonna look fabulous. Yeah. And then the next one, I promise it'll be a a calavera. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, it's eight o'clock. Um, I want to remind everybody that the Pastel Society general meeting is this Saturday at okay. 10 o'clock and we have a demonstration by laura pollock at 11 so it's a two-hour meeting there'll be a raffle there'll be a lot of fun it'll be a business meeting followed by a demonstration so we encourage everyone to join us absolutely um, tell your friends yeah oh yeah well, thank you thank you everybody for joining me this is a lot oh of that was fabulous and you're really nice thank you, thank you. Yeah, thank you so well, much thank you so inspired. I'm gonna yeah. go to the house. <laughs> Very yeah. this time. Thank you, Daniel. Very good. Thanks, Daniel.